in political sciences at UNISA here in the capital, Pretoria, Professor Dirk Kotze. Good morning, Professor. Thank you for Good joining morning. us. Yes. Your main interest, Professor, I understand, are South African politics and political conflict resolution. Yes. Must have been a very interesting last 20 years for you. Uh, yeah. Just before we start the interview, just reflect on 20 years uh, in a sort of free era. Yes, well, there are obviously many things that happened in the 20 years. If you want to combine the conflict resolution and the South African politics, obviously the transition period from 94 or even before 94 until at least 99 was, was a very important point and for, serve as for many people out or for many countries is actually a model of how to, to introduce a transition. We think about Madagascar, we think about Zimbabwe, uh, even Kenya, the idea of a government of national unity has become a very popular idea. The idea of a truth commission is now um, almost a model for most countries to use. Um, so so the, the, the early history of South Africa certainly made a major impact on the world in general and especially transitional governments, um, democratization in general. And uh, I think therefore these countries still look at South Africa. You think about a person like uh, Rolf Meyer or Cyril Ramaphosa, yeah. who was used all over the world. You know, uh, Cyril Ramaphosa is now in southern Sudan. Um, Rolf Meyer with the Basques and in Northern Ireland and in Sri Lanka and all sorts of places. So I think that is one achievement uh, for South Africa in general that sets itself or gives itself a certain moral authority yeah. um, about peacemaking, about transitions, about democratization, which is certainly something we need to, to value and protect. Professor, why is it then that voter apathy is on the, well, has been on the rise in South Africa really since 1994? Is it that South Africans have a, a more negative outlook than we, than, than we should have? Well, you know, I've, I've got a little bit of a different perspective about apathy. You know, it is, it is clear that there are, especially amongst the young people, uh, those 18, 19, 20 years old, there certainly was a lot, is a lot of apathy at the moment. We look at the level of registrations. Only about a third of them registered, 600,000 of 1.8 million. So there is certainly a problem. But if we look at those who have registered, and in, incidentally, um, with this election, more than 80% of those old, 18 years and older registered, which is a high number. You know? yeah. um, and of those who have registered, um, normally between 75 and 80% do vote. So compared to other countries and other elections, it is a relatively high voter turnout. But I think one is never satisfied. You always want to have uh, higher levels of participation. Yeah. Uh, we don't have the system like in Australia where it is compulsory to vote. Mm. Yeah. Um, I, I wanted to ask you about compulsory voting because how about a model like that in South Africa? We're sitting at 35% of people not taking part in the election at the moment, which is a big number. Yes, it, it is indeed so. Um, I, I think there are many reasons for it. I think there is a, a global tendency. You know, it's not only in South Africa, but a global tendency of that the credibility of political parties are, are going down. Um, and other institutions are regarded by the, the public as maybe more credible. And I think so it is also, to some extent, a motion of no confidence in political parties and the role that political parties play. We've seen in the past our social movements become an alternative for political parties. Unfortunately, in this election, social movements didn't play a very prominent role. Yeah. Um, but they, uh, they are becoming now alternative ways of expressing uh, persons. Look, look, for example, at the local demonstrations, the so-called service delivery demonstrations. Yeah. That in itself becomes an alternative way of, of being involved in politics, um, or the, the, the means that's being used becomes different. Uh, but I, I think one of the big problems all over the world, and in some countries they even talk about the idea of anti-politics. Think about the, the, the Tea Party movement in the U.S., yeah. um, who is critical of all parties. You know? um, in the 2009 election, the Abathlali movement who was saying, we don't want to support any party. You know? So that is certainly an issue. Um, and the, the, the main problem, I think, or the main challenge for political parties is how to build up more credibility, which means that they must move away from the idea that they are politically elite and they are removed from the, yeah. the constituencies. Sh should our political parties then maybe think more about leadership and less about leaders? 
I, I would say so, you know, and, 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 and I think there must be also the, the development of leadership at lower levels, not only at the national yeah. level. I think one of the, the characteristics of this election was the, a very much emphasis on the personalities of leaders, President Zuma, Alan Ziller, Julius Malema, uh, Lakota, you name them, and not so much on the content, not not so much about the policy proposals, about the alternatives that they want to propose. Yeah. And and I think many people are, are are just saying, well, we are not interested in the persons. We want to improve our lives, you know. And so it's not an ego trip that we are interested in for for the for the leadership. Professor, I want you to stay with us because it's a conversation that I think we're going to take uh, until, well, until we finish the show. But I just have to cross to, uh, well, let's take a look quickly at what's happening on our social record before we go to Poch of Sturm. Your comments. Lawrence Curler says, will be interesting to see how the born freeze of our country affect this year's polls.